we're working. Okay, golly, we will edit that before we publish it. Um, there's 17 people there, you worked it out. I'm so sorry for the trouble. Um, this is a new format for me. We're using YouTube Live for the first time. The good news is uh, once I get it sorted, we don't need to go through this again. Thank you for bearing with me. And hello, it has been, it's been a good while since I've seen you all, um, a few months I think. And I'm actually streaming to you from Yorkshire, England, where I'm on my last day of quarantine two week quarantine before I head up to Scotland to have Christmas with my parents. It's been such, I can take this off now, now that I know I'm working and it seems like people can hear me. Maybe someone, Linda, just let me know that you can hear me. But I don't think I need this anymore. Um, it's been quite a journey getting here. We went from Cold Spring in the Hudson Valley to JFK. Um, I've only flown once before during the pandemic and it was a very different experience it was very calm and quiet at the airport and this was not that so it it, it was quite a journey um we rented a car at manchester airport and drove out to uh, malton the village of old malton where we're staying now and a big shout out to annie grace who i believe is watching and um, who was kind enough to to let us use her holiday cottage to quarantine um i met annie through my heart rhythm intensive workshop. And it's just, it's amazing to me, the connections that you make through music and um, and maybe I'm biased, but I think the heart world is particularly warm and, um, and welcoming and just helpful generally. So thank you, Annie. It is lovely to be here. I have a wood fire. Logan, I think some of you have met Logan before. He's a bass player and um, he's here with me. Um, and uh, and he was very eager to like set up the fire perfectly. So he started it about an hour ago. So it would be blazing uh, in time for Harp Talk. So hi, everybody. Welcome. How are you? Uh, it's been quite a year and this is our last session for the year. I'd love to know how you're doing. Has the harp been of solace to you during this time? Um, anything you like. Let me just check in and see who's there and then we'll get harping. Hi, Wendy. Great. Mary Bryson, hi. Top fingers. Who's top fingers now? And um, Vivian Altry, hello there in Seattle. Mary Bryson, hi, Mary. Linda, hi, Linda. Thanks for the email. That was such a help. Um, oh, top fingers is Tara from Seattle. Hi, Tara. I, I've got all the new names now. We had the Facebook names and now we have the YouTube names. Jeanette, Hannah, hello from Toronto or hello to Toronto. We've got Kerry. Hi, Kerry. Um, Tracy Howell from Canada. Hi, Tracy. Wendy, can we can hear? Great, great, great. Good job, Logan. I know he is a good one. Carol Fournier. Hello, Carol. Lovely to have you. Ali from Iowa. Um, Julie Gorka from Nat Rally, North Carolina. Great, great. Um, I think some other people are just trickling in. Uh, let's see. So Massachusetts, just warning, the chat was lagging on yesterday's YouTube session. Okay, yes, there might be some internet stuff, you guys. I am um, in this lovely old village in Yorkshire. Um, I don't have too much control. The good thing is I will publish this on the Harp Talk. I'm gonna to start to publish these on the Harp Talk. Facebook, uh, YouTube, I'm confusing everybody now, YouTube pages so that people can access them later. So these should be um, available for a whole year to come. If the internet skips a beat or if you miss something, um, you'll be able to access it later via the Harp Talk YouTube page. Please go ahead and, and follow if you've not followed the YouTube page. This is kind of, we're gradually moving over all of our business here. I'm still gonna post updates, updates on the Facebook page, um, but this just allows people who don't use Facebook to join us. Um, if anyone is, I, I know that there's more people expecting to be here than are here right now. And I'm concerned that there's, um, they've just not got the new link. If you know anyone who is planning to come, give them a little text with a new link um, or, or post or, or something just so that they know where to go. 
Um, well, so today we're going to talk about one of my favourite Christmas carols. I am unapologetically pro-Christmas. I love Christmas time. I, I, I always feel very spoiled during this month because my birthday is also in December. So I associate the month with celebrations and with fires and mulled wine and every Christmas time I'm usually in Boston for the whole month putting together a show called the Christmas Celtic Sojourn. Um, our home base is the Cutler Majestic Theatre which is uh, this wonderful old-fashioned jewel box-esque theatre um, and it's such a Christmassy place to be based for the month. Um, unfortunately, this year, of course, there's going to be no live pod up and travel to Rockport, Massachusetts, where we recorded a version that's going to be going out online. If anyone hasn't got tickets yet or wants any info, let me know because it's really quite a special production. We bubbled um, with the core group of instrumentalists and then we collaborated with wonderful singers in America. We've got Aoife O'Donovan. In Ireland, we've got Kathy Jordan and um, Elish Kennedy. In Scotland, we've got Hannah Rarity, Mary Campbell, Siobhan Miller. Um, we've got really a, a wonderful host of, of guest musicians that we couldn't have um, possibly collaborated all with in, in real time. So one of the silver linings of this time is being able to connect with amazing musicians across the ocean. Um, it's been really beautifully and artfully put together. The, the cinematography is amazing and it's really a celebration of both the old and the new in Celtic music. So if you want information about that, you can go to Celtic christmas.com I assume celticchristmas.com it's running in partner with different theatres from the 15th to the 20th of December so every night we're kind of treating it as a live concert you can get your tickets sit down with the family and watch it in real time and support that particular theatre so each night is a different theatre and um, but it's really it's really quite fun Okay, let's see if there's anything to tackle from you guys before I get playing. We've got Becky from Toronto. Tara says, harping and video calling have saved my sanity. I mean, me too, Tara. What would we do without the internet? Thank you, Julie. Oh, we've got someone, Irene from Lopez Island, Washington. Irene, I had... Did I meet you when I was on Lopez Island a couple of years ago? I played a concert in the most beautiful little chapel. It was stunning. And I, I, I want to go back to Lopez Island. Um, tell me if I met you there. I, I wonder if I did. Um, but I remember Lopez Island very fondly. Uh, ah, Tara's daughter's birthday is today also. Um, oh, thank you, Wendy. Ali. I love Christchild's lullaby. Good. Okay, well, do you know what? I'm going to start just by playing this carol. A lot of you might be familiar with this. Those in America may not be. The Christchild's lullaby is a classic Celtic carol. It's a beautifully simple melody. And what I wanted to do today was use this melody as a vehicle for exploring all kinds of um, harmonies and textures. I created a little interlude. Actually, I created it for the Christmas Celtic show I was just mentioning, um, but I've kind of inserted it into this harp arrangement. I'm going to play it to you to get it into your ears. We're then going to break down and do some simple warm-up exercises using the left hand from the Christchild's Lullaby arrangement as an ostinato to get our fingers moving. And then we'll go into the arrangement itself and break down different harmony ideas, how we're using the hands to create a narrative, to create ambience, because that's really what this time of year is about. It, it, it doesn't um, matter what background you come from, what religion um, you're from or, or, or race, the, the ambience of this time of year is, um, is so special and cosy and full of hig, as they, I think it's hig, higgy, that word H-Y-G-G-E, uh, it's a Scandinavian word, this idea of coziness, um, and, uh, and I'm full of that inside right now. So here's a little of the Christ Child's Lullaby. I'm going to start off with this ostinato. Thank you. 
this new arrangement or thereabouts you know I'm not very good at uh, sticking to arrangements um, but I'd like to start by warming our hands up for those of you who are new to Heart Talk if this is your first time actually I'd particularly like to hear from you let me know it's your first time and let me know your name we usually start these sessions with um, a warm-up. There is accompanying sheet music, and if you're interested, you can go to my website to the Learn section, and there's a whole um, section of handouts. And if you look at the upcoming, there'll be two for this particular session. After that, you can find them in the archived section. And if there's any ever, ever any issues, just email me, and I'll I'll be able to send them to you directly. However, I know that some people don't like to use music and there's so many different ways to learn. So it's not necessary and I'm gonna walk you through these exercises without the music. So even if you have the music, take notes, but let's really concentrate on looking at the hands. Do you know, I hadn't thought about it. When, when Logan made the fire, I hadn't thought about how I was gonna burn up in here. It's really warm. I might have to call him to open the window. <laughs> So we're going to start with a simple ostinato. It's a two measure ostinato in three, four. Um, we're starting with an octave leap. We go C, C, G. Now often when I'm teaching octaves, it's one of the few times that I'm set like this on the harp with my palm facing the strings because we have this nice kind of grabbing motion often when we play octaves hands together. However, in this case, we're playing the notes separately, so I'm going from here to here. I'm in a more linear playing position, and when I think linear position, I think elbow out to support the hand. Um, the hand is an extension of the arm, the fingers go down, and the thumb goes up. And so this is a position that we're attacking this ostinato in. The notes are C, C, G, B flat, A, F. And we start by placing four and one on C to C. We're always placing ahead as much as we can. So as soon as we play that fourth finger, we set the two on G, we play the C, we set the thumb on B flat, we set two and three on A and F. Let's try that together. So coming to the heart, Shoulders relaxed. Once you've got your fingers in position, make sure that your shoulders are relaxed. C, C, G, B flat, A, F. So join me. Once you get the notes, you want to make it feel circular. This isn't really a two bar pattern. This is a never ending pattern. That's the way I want you to attack it. So 
So when I'm playing B flat, A and F, I set all four fingers because I'm going to go right down to the fourth to start again. I'm light and easy. I'm imagining my wrist kind of traveling in circles as I play. And first of all, with the right hand, we're just going to imitate this same pattern finding the ease, seeking a lightness and an ease in both hands. Instead of playing it hands together, although feel free to start just the hands together in unison, we're then going to play with the right hand at an eighth note offbeat to the left hand. So we're going one and two and three and upbeat is my right hand. Now be careful because often the right hand immediately takes dominance volume wise and we want to bring it back, keep the right hand light, particularly because it's higher in register, it's going to cut more anyway. So we can just play it lightly. <laughs> And then switch it round. Try the right hand first and the left hand as the offbeat. So right hand downbeat, left hand offbeat. If it's too much to dive right into that, you can just count. One and, 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 and. That feels harder to me than actually playing it. <laughs> right hand. I'm going to skip over the sheet a little bit and, and jump back and forth between some of the exercises. The first right hand pattern that we're going to juxtapose against the ostinato um, is this F suspended two chord. And now we've spoken a lot about the F suspended fourth chord, which is when we take the third of a triad and simply shift it up a whole step um, so that we don't have the third. We don't know whether it's major or minor. That's a key piece of uh, harmonic information. And by taking it away, it gives our harmony more ambiguity. We're doing the same thing, but instead of taking um, the third away and replacing it with the fourth, we're replacing it with a second. So if you look at an F triad, F, A, and C, if we take away the A and play the G instead, we have F, G, and C. And that's just the shape that we're working with today. Let's just all do that together one more time, moving from an F triad, F, A and C. We take away the third, replace the third with a second G and we have a new shape, F, G, C, an F suspended second chord. Block it, move it up the octave. with the shape before we divide up the notes. Then we're going to play it in, uh, in groups of three. We're going to go so that, let me make sure that's right. Yeah, one, two, three. So we do it three times. One, time we're going up the octave and this isn't a jump this is a third crossing under from this under uh, it's going from the bottom F to the F above let's just practice that upwards um, movement as we go from this octave up here when we're doing that I want you to pretend that your arm's going to keep on traveling so it doesn't feel like we're at the top of anything it still feels like we're just moving. This is to try and stop your shoulders from getting crunched. Sometimes we get crunched where, when we're in the higher registers. So all the way up. Keep going. Imagine your hand. Keep going. Lean back if you have to. So 
sometimes the physical really helps me embody the the musical line, the, the freedom of sound that I want. And, and when I'm playing a tricky ascending passage, I'll pretend that it has to go much further so that when I stop, it feels easy and, and in comparison to, to what I had in my head. A little bit of trickery. So let's do one, two, three. Again, one, two, three. And we do three at the top. One, two, three. Come down over with the thumb. Third hits the F and we start again. Let's just do the right hand a few times. Very light, very easy. It's not as anchored as your left hand ostinato is going to be. And we want to practice it with that lightness and um, so that we don't have to bring it in later. Here we go. going before I get my specifics down, which I know is kind of reverse psychology. And um, we're so often taught to get the, the little bits and pieces down before we make a whole. And that's a wonderful way to practice too, but let's practice it both ways. So I'm, I'm kind of thinking with my body about this whole big circular shape, and then I'm kind of working out the nitty gritty from there. That's one of the exercises. We're just gonna tackle one more now. Um, and that's actually a, a, a written part in the arrangement. The arrangement starts off with the ostinato. And then we go. There's this little Alberti bass section in the right hand. And it's actually quite tricky. It's not tricky by itself, but it's tricky with the left hand because we're going in different directions. Let's first of all work out just that right hand. We've got the fourth finger on C, the second finger on G, and the thumb up on C. So open fifths, four, two, one, C, G, C, very lightly, whispery, like a spider's thread. And to make sure it doesn't sound angular, be doubly sure that you're not leaning into either the bottom or the top, especially not the top, because it will sound too piercing or harsh. Uh, think of a curve, uh, like if the notes are here, here, and here, you're going like this, you're leaning into the middle of it. I'll exaggerate it so you can hear the difference. Here's with no leaning in or out at all. Even. I'm going to lean into the middle. It's very subtle, but I think it gives a little more dimension to the shape. We're going to try and put it with the left hand. Some of you might be giggling at home thinking there's no way I'm putting it together with the left hand right now. And that's fine. You take it away and do it at your own speed. And when you are putting it together with the left hand, just add in a couple of notes. Maybe I wouldn't do the whole thing. Maybe I would just do the first three notes of the left hand. should be much lighter than the anchored ostinato. And then you can start playing with the dynamics, creating bigger 
surges, crescendos, decrescendos. Speed it up. tried this yet so it might be a crash and burn situation but I'm going to try and put the left hand um, ostinato into my right hand. Same notes if you weren't able to manage it in the left hand give it a go in the right hand even if you just get the first three notes it's a great start so C, C, G, B flat, A, F. The left hand, we're covering that Alberti bass, C, G, C. Um, for this kind of like light rippling pattern in the left hand, I need my core to help support me. It's gonna to get too much strain on the shoulders if I'm just holding my arm up um, with the arm strength. So I'm really, I'm breathing in through my stomach. I'm feeling the core support me. And it means that then I can play lightly. If I'm really um, tense in my arm, it's really hard to play in an effortless sounding way. So use that core. I know everyone's been doing their, their quarantine workout videos. I'm looking at my hand in the camera because I'm interested as to how much movement I'm doing. With this um, motif, I want a little movement. There should be like a little rock, but I don't want too much movement. So I'm trying to make sure there's some stillness remaining. I'm gonna try hands together. creative um, uh, rabbit holes or ventures and allow yourself to go there and um, this element of play is so at the heart of why we um, why we play music why we have these instruments so let your hands and your mind and your creative self play even during the technical side of your practice um, I'm going to demonstrate one more uh, little exercise from the sheet um, but now it would be a great time for any questions. If you've got any questions regarding technical issues that you're having with any pieces or any hand questions, um, I'm going to show you this one last very simple exercise and then I'm going to come over and check on your comments. Um, let me just make sure I'm teaching this right. I've got the handouts here. Uh, yes, so this uh, this warm up is also taking a chord from the Christchild's lullaby arrangement, and we're just looping it. This is something that I do a lot for all of those who are um, regular harp talk attendees, and we're just taking this shape, F C F in the bass, F C F, G A C in the right hand, and then we're shifting it up the octave. So before we start rippling that up and down, let's make sure that our hands know the shapes. How do we do that? We block the notes. The blocking is what teaches our hands muscle memory, and it's a really important step. So left hand F, C, F, I block it, I move up the octave, I play it again. Down, up. The right hand is playing G, A, and C. G, A, and C. We squeeze the strings before we play them. So we feel them and then we play. Up the octave we feel and then we play. And then we put it together. 
And when we put the left and the right hand together, we want to create one seamless thread of sound. So we want this just to sound like ripples up and down. You see, I'm, kind of, I'm almost exaggerating this motion, this wheel-like motion, but when I get into it, that's how I want to feel it. And even if you're at the level where you have to play it much, much slower, you can still have this imagery of, of circular motion in your mind. You can still hold yourself with your core and play with lightness. If I was playing it very, very slow, it would I, I almost have to hold myself more actually when I'm playing slow, but I'm still trying to create the legato sound um, and the lightness. no sharp angles. And then gradually get a little lighter and start to speed up. You can go up further if you want. It's really, um, I, it's great practice to have to find ways to deconstruct something that's too difficult for you. Um, it, it's a way that you're going to play repertoire that you care about much faster. Um, and, and likewise, if something's too simple to you, it's really to your advantage to start working out how you can tailor it and make it a little more challenging. Add in some extra notes, personalize it with melodic variation, ornamentation, um, all of these um, arrangements and technical challenges that I'm giving you are to be made your own. So, so please just use them as a kind of jump start for your own practice, wherever that may be. Okay, I'm gonna check in with our comments. Let's see. Um, Irene, we did meet at that church in Lopez Island. Well, great to have you again. So I'm seeing my compute, my new camera is auto-focusing in and out a lot. Hello, Mallory. Thank you. Um, Vivian is asking, what does PDLT mean on, on the music? PDLT means près de la table. That's a terrible French accent. Um, and it's when we play close to the soundboard. So when I'm down the second time round the tune, Vivian, I'm playing much further down the strings. <laughs> like sound. So just playing the melody very simply but very close to the soundboard and, and if you're not sure whether you're doing it right really use your ears and your own sense of judgment to listen. You can hear how different the sound is maybe two inches away than it is a couple of centimeters away or one inch. It's much tighter down there, it's much more guitar like So hear the, 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 the change of timbre and, um, and kind of seek it out when you're trying to find that placement. Um, and for anyone who doesn't have the music, the second time around the tune in the written arrangement, we'll, we'll talk about this in a second as well. We're, we're going to go there. Um, but that's just what it means. It means close to the soundboard. Pray to the tab. Okay. Um... Irene, it is your first time, so very welcome. Very welcome. You're very welcome. That wasn't crazy. Um, I'm just telling you what we're in. Great, people are pointing out that this is indeed in C mix Lydian. We've got our flat seven. Uh, it looks like we're in the key of F major in the music um, because we see the B flat in the key signature. But our tonal center is C, and that makes this mixolydian, which is simply a major scale, any major scale with a flat seven. Um, oh, there's Jody. Hi, Jody. Good to see you. And Keith from Vancouver. Hi, Keith. Yeah, Wendy's saying when she relaxes her, her mind, it's easy to, to get into the, the patterns. And 
Absolutely. I mean, when I'm working with this stuff, I, I'll i sit on one exercise for an awful long time. I'll get the metronome going and there's something kind of meditative about it. And I, and I feel like you can actually only get to the real work, the deep work, if you allow your hands to do something um, many times over. It's uh, it's like when you go for a massage, often they'll do kind of like outer fascia work where they're relaxing the outer muscles before they can actually get in and really make a difference. Um, and I kind of feel like there's a similarity. It's like well, we need to get our hands used to doing the superficial thing worse first before we can kind of go in a little bit deeper. Please keep the questions coming. I'm going to go into the arrangement now. I'm just going to talk through what we're what we've done and I'm pulling up the melody I've got all kinds of screens in front of me I had wanted another one so that I could just see your comments right there but working on it so we start with the ostinato so this idea of ambience the ambience of this time of year that's what we're trying to create right at the very beginning if you're an improviser or if you'd like to try improvising, this is a great opportunity to just create some little darts of sound, little washes of colour over this ostinato in the left hand. Maybe you could do some harmonics. pattern that we went over in the technical side of things I come up this F suspended two chord and I settle into the Alberti bass and I like to kind of arrive at it and then dwindle away get much softer so I lean into it preset the E flat before C major. If you're more experienced with chromatic playing and lever changes, you don't need to. You can do it on the fly. If you're interested in exploring non-diatonic harmony, but a little bit wary of changing levers, you can preset that. And you just need to know when you're improvising and so on, you want to stay away from that E flat. But that's what's going to be our beautiful color moment in the interlude. So we've begun, the ostinato is in place. And I want the melody to sing like a bell over the ostinato. So even though that might um, arguably be one of the simplest parts of the whole tune, I think it's the most important. I'm caring about every single note of that melody and I want to phrase it with real purpose. And um, if I'm not sure how to phrase something, I'll often sing along with it. It just gives it a nice sense of um, fluidity or something. So make sure that your melody is singing out. I'm balancing my hands so that the melody is singing over the ostinato, but not sounding piercing in any way. Um, when the harmony goes in a different direction, I break from the ostinato. I move down to the B flat chord. And at the end of that first verse, instead of ending on a C chord, the tonic, <laughs> actually end it on an F chord. I think I do that both times. And you'll just hear the difference. 
here's me ending it on the on the C chord. <laughs> Finality to it. If I end it on the F chord, there's so much room to to, to move on, and, and it's, it's bringing us forward. Since it's at the beginning of the arrangement, I, I want that forward motion. So that's why the F chord is in there. Uh, what else do I have in there now? Um, so I finished the first time. Da, 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 da. I cut a little counter melody with my right hand. When I'm doing that, I want to make sure that both voices are equal. Beforehand, the melody was more important, but now in this accompaniment layer, I'm, I'm making sure both hands are equal. And then we're in our little um, interlude. That's the note, that's such a dreamy note. I'm, I'm patting my belly because it gives me the Christmas fuzz. So, uh, harmony has um, the power to just really change a feeling or a vibe. And right there... And then come away. I could lean even more into that F chord, but, but I just, I don't want to go there quite yet. I think it perhaps has even more impact if we have a little restraint. And then here. In that line, in the right hand, every note has, yeah, every melody note, if you could call it a melody, has two notes. And I'm thinking of the melody as being the bottom one. So I'm really trying to bring out the bottom voice. And that's tricky. If you've got the music there, this is the measure 33, 34, 35. 33 to 35. And just practice that right hand bit. For those who don't have the music, the melody is going E, F, E, D, C, C. But over the top of it, I'm playing a C with every note. And I'm trying to keep the thumb very light on the C while I bring out the melody. Again. If I lean on the thumb, you can hear the difference. So I'm balancing all the time. Does that make sense so far? So we've got this ostinato, we've got this kind of wash of colour at the beginning in the right hand, we bring in the melody, clear as a bell and kind of childlike, there's a, sim I mean, it's a Christ child's lullaby, um, but we're trying to embody that simple beauty in the right hand. We then have the interlude. <laughs> verse and Vivian this is where we're going down to the very base of um, the string right by the soundboard and I'm really leaning in and trying to get that guitar like sound we're aiming for a different color here center of the string. Here. I love that chord. That's instead of going to a seven, a flat seven, which is the B flat, we're using the B flat chord all the time through this arrangement. And instead of both hands moving to the B flat, what I'm doing there is I'm I'm playing um the, the B flat in the right hand but keeping the C in the bass. So instead of going like this like this. 
Exercise. And then we're in the interlude again, but it's higher up. We're kind of winding down. You may choose to do a whole other time around R2, and by all means, please go for it. But for me here, I'm coming up and I, I'm leaning into the ascent. such a particular color and again I think it maximizes the impact just to come away you're challenging the listeners expectations they're expecting you to keep leaning in and, and you're coming away Child's Lullaby. I love the melody. I love the simplicity of it. It's a wonderful um, option for trying some of these different textures and perhaps you have some questions about the arrangement. So I'm going to come over to you now again and check out the comments. Mm. Let's see. So Oh, Sarah, I'm glad you're working on it. So we have no comment, we have no questions so far. Is that really true? We have no questions? That might mean we're coming to the end, folks. There might be a delay. So I'm gonna give it a few minutes. Um, while I give it a few minutes, uh, I maybe I'll just do a little bit of housekeeping. I mentioned the Christmas Celtic um, series of concerts already and uh, and I really encourage you to to check it out if you're able it's a lovely thing to do with the family it runs from December 15th to 20th and I had something else that I wanted to tell you about oh oh <laughs> well hello everybody you guys met Logan welcome this is to Logan. our Christmas cottage <laughs> May, here's your Christmassy gin and tonic I got a gin and tonic. Fantastic. Well, nice Merry to see Christmas. You all. I'm gonna wrap up. Okay. Um, this is live streaming, but I got a gin and tonic, so I'm happy. Um, what was the other thing that I had to tell you about now? Oh yes, I got a new Christmas suite for Clarsach out. So this is a suite of three Christmas carols. And um it's O Come O Come Emmanuel, God Rest You Merry Gentlemen, and Ding Dong Merrily on High. These are just three of my favorite carols. They're to be played as a suite or individually, so you can connect them. Um, or you can just play them individually. But there are some fun little arrangement things. They're up for sale on the website. My publisher is 80 Days. If you just look at 80 Days Publishing, you'll see it. Um, I think I put it up on my website as well. But email me if there's any issues. We're going to be starting back with Harp Talk in the new year. Um, the last weekend of January will be the first one. We're going to be here on YouTube live. I'm going to have worked it out by then. And hopefully it will be a, a little bit smoother. But it's always um, a pleasure for me to be here and spend my Sunday afternoons with you um, and Logan in the kitchen. Let me just check in some of these comments here. Mark Stricker is saying, I'm getting ready for my Christmas day, Christmas on the driveway here in San Antonio. Love it, Mark. Uh, harp, piano, and voice. Wait, is that Mark or is that Sherry? That must be Sherry Stricker. Uh, will there be a replay video on YouTube 
watch tonight. Uh, yeah, Sherry, I'm going to post this. Hopefully, fingers crossed, it'll be okay. This is my first time doing it, but I should just be able to post it, and you guys should be able to rewatch it. Um, that's the that's the plan. Uh, yeah, Sarah, you have total permission to start drinking early. Um, Linda's asking, when doing the rolled F chord, it's a bit challenging to not damp strings when you're starting to play the F up the octave. Ha. Huh. Let's just see what you mean there, Linda. Um, um, so when I was doing it, I was going down first and then back up. And I'm wondering, is that what you mean? That when you come back up, then it's you're damping the notes? Or if you're just crossing over, you're still muting? Does that make sense? I want to answer your question. I'm just not quite sure what you mean. Um, yeah, I, I was going down and up. Actually, what I wrote in the arrangement is just a, a simple rolled chord. I just like the kind of spider webby nature of going down and then going back up again. Um, what would I do? Oh, I see. Is it the thumb is muting your fourth finger, perhaps? Does that sound right? I think I would just probably practice blocking. Just uh, the blocking is great as well because your hands get used to get outing, get getting out of the way of one another. So I'd probably just practice it. If it is the fourth that's bumping up against the thumb on the G, just get used to getting them out of the way of one another. And if you need an extra little second, it's the last chord of the whole piece, so you can stagger it as you want. Just try not to make this stagger too bumpy. D does that help? Um, okay. Okay. Well, great. I don't know if I have any other news for you. We're going to be heading to Scotland. Um, I've been working on a new piece that I'm really excited. It's gonna get um, kind of put together and performed on video in January in Glasgow at a fantastic gallery called Chermanka. It's a kinetic theater. It's a amazing Russian artist called Edward Bersitsky. And he's created these huge moving sculptures um, out of scrap metal and wonderfully elaborately carved um, uh, little sculptures that move and and the whole thing is a it, it be really becomes a wonderland and I've written a new piece called Death and the Polar Bear um, that we're going to perform in amongst those moving sculptures. Uh, you know right now we're not able to perform live so we're trying to get creative and I thought if we have to do a video performance what more magical place to do it than the Shermanka Gallery. So that's what we're going to do in January. We've got Harmonium, Aidan O'Rourke and Fiddle. We've got, we've got a couple of um, other fantastic musicians from Scotland as well. So excited about that. That's going to be coming to you in April. Um, but do keep in touch. My email's on my website. If you're not on my email list, go ahead and sign up on my website. Um, I'm not sending out any more merchandise for the year because I'm in Scotland, but if anyone doesn't have a CD or an LP, um, you, well, you can download the digital anytime or you can put the order in for that on my website and I'll get them out in the new year. But for now, I hope you have a lovely Christmas. I hope you play lots of heart or, or if you're Jewish, a wonderful Hanukkah, time of rest and um, just a winding down of the season and a kind of hunkering down into what's important to you. Uh, thanks for tuning in, everybody. Thanks for bearing with the technical difficulties of this new medium. And I'll see you the last weekend in January. And um, I always love hearing from you if you've got things that you'd like to cover in the new year. So don't hesitate to reach out. All right. Merry Christmas. <laughs>